Hey everyone, thanks for watching CNN 10 this Monday. This is our last week on the air for our spring season. So after this Friday, our show will be on hiatus until this August. We start today with a celebration. In a central U.S. city of about 50,000 people, folks are going to work, high school and college students recently graduated, a memorial run was held over the weekend. That sounds like a slice of life in any American city, but it's particularly meaningful here. This is Joplin, Missouri, a community that has been rebuilt after being hit by the deadliest tornado this century. It struck 10 years ago on May 22nd. Its wind speeds were greater than 200 miles per hour, making it an EF5 tornado, the strongest classification on the enhanced Fujita scale. In some places, the twister was a mile wide, so big that one witness said it looked like a thunderstorm. Some people in Joplin might not have taken shelter immediately because false alarms had sounded over the years. Many others didn't really have a safe place to go. Affiliate WDRB reports that 82% of the homes in Joplin didn't have basements or storm shelters when the tornado struck. And the bathrooms and closets people went to didn't provide enough protection. The tornado was on the ground for 22 miles. It destroyed almost 30% of Joplin. 161 people were killed. More than 1,000 were injured. 7,500 homes and 500 businesses were either damaged or destroyed. With damage estimates exceeding $3 billion, this was the costliest tornado to hit the U.S. since record keeping began in 1950. I specifically spoke to many people the next day in dirty clothes, a dirty t-shirt, a dirty pair of shorts, maybe sandals, maybe tennis shoes. Most of them said, this is all I own. Stories of heroism followed. The Pizza Hut worker who ushered people into a freezer, saving many of their lives before losing his own. The friends and first responders who rushed in from miles away to help those who were hurt. Joplin has held numerous events celebrating the progress it's made since the storm. It's had to rebuild both physically and emotionally. And the memorial run held on Saturday not only honored those who were lost, it celebrated the rebirth of the city. 10 second trivia. Where would you find Mariner Valley, Tharsis, and Utopia Planitia? Homer's Odyssey, Mariana Trench, Mars, or Star Wars Phantom Menace? These are all features of the Red Planet, aka Mars. Whether we're talking about space stations, moon missions, or moves on Mars, the United States often teams up with other countries on its research. But China isn't one of them. In 2011, Congress passed a law that says NASA is not allowed to cooperate with China in space. The reasons? The U.S. government's concerned that China would take advantage of the space program to spy on America or to steal U.S. technology. But the communist nation is going its own way in building a space station, shooting for the moon, and landing vehicles on the Red Planet. Fresh tracks on the Red Planet mean new inroads for China in the latest space race. The Churong rover went out for a drive on Saturday, making China the second country after the United States to land and operate such a vehicle on Mars. The probe carrying Churong touched down on Mars on May 15. China's top space official says it's a huge leap forward for the program. China's rover will now tread across the Martian terrain to learn what it can about the planet in hopes that humans can one day land there too. The Chinese rover that has now landed on Mars. NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, so help me sworn in earlier this month, congratulated China's space agency, but also warned Congress that China has ambitious plans for both Mars and the moon. They're going to be landing humans on the moon. That should tell us something about our need to get off our duff. China is one of three countries that launched missions to the Red Planet last summer, with NASA's Perseverance landing on Mars in February. The Hope spacecraft launched by the UAE is orbiting the planet, but not designed to land. In addition, NASA's Curiosity rover has been on the ground since 2012, making for a lot of competition in this next frontier. Michael Holmes, CNN. 
According to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, a government agency that sets guidelines when it comes to crime penalties, between 40 and 60 percent of federal inmates commit new crimes after they're released from prison. For former inmates who participate in a program called Second U, that recidivism rate is less than 2 percent. It's thanks in large part to the efforts of Hector Guadalupe, a personal trainer who changed his own life when he was in prison and the lives of hundreds of others afterward. He's using fitness to get people's bodies in shape and their lives back on track. When people get out of prison, society thinks, oh, you should just go get a job, and it's not that easy. Once you have a record, nothing is set up for them to win. Growing up in Brooklyn without, I would say, it was just challenging. Both my parents were deceased. I had love in my family, but I didn't have guidance. And the narcotics trade was my way of survival. You get so deep in it, you can't find a way out. And my only way out was when I got incarcerated. Working out is like everything when you're in prison. It puts you in a healthy mindset, washes away troubles. It makes you feel like you're not there. I just became obsessed with fitness. Lost 90 pounds, and then that translated into me getting certified, getting a job in the gym in the prison, and it let me know like, oh, I actually have a shot at a career. When I got out of prison, I'm literally at every corporate health club trying to get a job, filling out applications, and nobody was calling me back. And I knew why, but I didn't give up. Come on, come on, come on. Stay strong. Eight, nine months later, I then got a job. One. And that was like everything to me. One, right back down. I spent my first four years home with no day off and it felt great. I felt like I was part of society, which is something that we all should have an opportunity to do, right? I started doing time shortly after my mother passed away, when I was like 15. By the time I came home, I gave the system half my life. The people that are home, like taking care of their family, making a living, those are the people that I wanted to try to be like. If you're gonna snap up, and up, one, good, right back under. At a Second Youth Foundation, we get formerly incarcerated men and women, national certifications in job placements in boutique gyms and corporate health clubs throughout New York City. We want to give you your second chance at life. You have to give yourself a chance at this. You can't be scared to fail. We now have a eight-week training program, six days a week. Each participant enrolled gets a $1,300 stipend, free transportation software training, everyone gets a free tablet. Blood flowing to the heart and back to the body, you're talking about coronary circulation. So these men and women are taught by our coaches everything you can think on bone structure, kinesiology. Pepsin breaks down proteins into smaller protein. It's like learning a new language. Fitness, it got me through my time in prison. I knew how to work out, but I didn't know the science behind everything. He just gave me the foundation to where I could become successful. Nice, nice to meet you. you. <laughs> Heck's whole approach with us is to maximize our potential. That you're not what you got convicted of. That's not you. For 10 out of 10, a star is born? Well, this is a simulation of what that might look like. It was created using a model of gas dynamics, gravity, magnetic fields, heating and cooling, and stellar activity, and then mixing all that up in a supercomputer and colorizing it. The result is what researchers are calling Star Forge, short for star formation and gaseous environments, and they hope it'll help them better understand just how stars are formed. Now, to some of us, it might seem nebulous, and that's the whole zenith. There are a black hole lot of theories, a new ton of things we don't know about the universe. Our understanding is so or cloudy. So if you have a prograde simulation that solar flares up the imagination, loop in an open cluster of scientists because there is no way they're going to miss it. Newark High School is in Newark, Delaware. Thank you for your shout out request on our YouTube channel. That's the only place we look for the schools we mentioned. With four shows left to go, I'm Carl Azus for CNN.